بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین مالک بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین الرحمن الرحیم مالک یوم الدین ایاک نعبد و ایاک نستعین اہدن سراط المستقیم سراط الذین آنمت علیہم غیر مقضوب علیہم ولا الدولین وصل اللہ وسلم على نبینا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أي الله حبت في الله one of our brothers of Fudala may Allah subhanahu wa taala bless him and preserve him and grant us and him forgiveness and guidance who's new to Islam asked about a few important issues. and related to being a new Muslim some of the doubts and for general nasiha or advice in dealing with those things and with dealing with being a new Muslim Alhamdulillah since we min fadlillah subhanahu wa ta'ala have blessed to become guided to Islam by Allah Azza wa Jal we have to remind one another with regards to these important issues and especially those who have had years in Islam having left disbelief and come to belief to share their experiences and to share the pitfalls that a person might face in order to make the path easier and the path and the burden lighter and full of light for those who follow that same path which is the path to Islam Ahabatifillah the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam has said Ad-Deen Al-Nasiha Qalu Liman Qalu Lillahi Wa Li Kitabihi Wa Li Rasoolihi Wa Li A'immatu Muslimin Wa Ammatihim O Kama Qala Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the deen is sincere advice and they said to who? he said to Allah and to his book and to his messenger uh, and to the leader of the Muslims and to the general Muslims so we have to have sincere advice for one another and we have to follow the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that is how we have a nasiha lillah is that we follow his commandments and nasiha to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that we have sincerity in following his sunnah and adhering to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and sincerity to one another by advising one another Ahabatifillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the deen and the law in Islam that verily the religion to Allah is Islam that's the only religion accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided you to that is a great ni'mah, it's a great mercy and favor from your Lord. But we have to strive after that guidance to stay guided. Because any of us can go astray. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya amanu. Ya amanu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the book of the Quran, O those who believe, 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the book of the Quran, O you who believe, fear Allah, O those who believe, 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 O you who believe, fear Allah, the rightful or the full 
way in which you can give have taqwa or a full way in which you can fear him and do not die except in a state of Islam so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us with fearing him he commands us with taqwa which is doing those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded and avoiding those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited and then he says and do not die except in a state of belief in a state of Iman so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with Iman and Taqwa and the, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said in a beautiful hadith which shows us the importance and the danger with taking our religion for granted and not paying attention to this very important advice and the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because none of us none of us are guaranteed uh, another day in this life and none of, none of us are guaranteed another day of guidance that in fact Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with this great ni'mah of Islam and that if you choose not to follow his commandments Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can leave you in misguidance or that what was written for you can come to pass and you go astray and end up in the hellfire. Ahabatifillah in the hadith in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said which is a very long narration on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which he mentioned that verily one of you will be gathered in the stomach of his mother or in the womb of his mother 40 days and then he will be after 40 days become a morsel of flesh and then he will after that, after another 40 days, will begin to be formed. And then an angel will come to him. And the angel will uh, blow into that morsel of flesh its soul. And four things will, uh, are written for that person. The status of that person. And with that ahabatifillah, at the end of the hadith, the Prophet wasallam says that the person who who uh, maybe they did all throughout their life they did righteousness then what was written will overtake them and they will do this uh, wicked sins and they will die in that state and then there are those who did wickedness all throughout their life and what was written will overtake them and they will do the deeds of paradise and enter it showing us that we cannot take guidance for granted عن أبي عبد الرحمن عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه قال حدثنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم هو صادق المصدوق إن أحدكم يجمع خلقه في بطن أمه أربعين يوم نطفة ثم يكون علقة مثل ذلك ثم يكون مضغة مثل ذلك ثم يرسل إليه الملك فينفخ فيه الروح ويؤمر بأربع كلمات 
بكتب رزقه وأجله وعمله وشقيه صعيد فهو الله الذي لا إله غيره إن أهدكم ليعملوا بعمل أهل الجنة حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها ذراع فيسبكوا عليه الكتاب فيعملوا بعمل أهل النار فيدخلوا فيدخلها وإن أهدكم ليعملوا بعمل أهل النار حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها ذراع فيسبكوا عليه الكتاب فيعملوا بعمل أهل الجنة فيدخلوها رواه بخاري ومسلم هبت في الله إن حديث عبد الله uh, Abi Abdurrahman Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us and he is the most truthful the one to be believed As-Sadiq al-Masduq he said verily one of you will be put together and created in the stomach of his mother 40 days as Nutfa as the the seed which is the mixing of the male sperm and the woman's egg for 40 days then he will become a, more, a, a blood clot for a similar period 40 days and then he will become a morsel of flesh for 40 days then an angel will be sent to him and he will blow into his soul or he will be blown into him uh, he will blow in into him a soul and he will be commanded with four things with writing this person's provisions and their lifespan and their deeds and whether happy or sad and by Allah the one whose soul or the one whose hand my soul is in, that one of you will do the deeds of the people of paradise. And then he will do, then what was written will overtake him and he will enter the hellfire. Do the deeds of the people of the people of hellfire and enter it. And one of you will do the deeds of the people of the hellfire until they are an R span length away from Jannah and they will do the, the uh, from the hellfire, then they will do the deeds of the people of paradise and they will enter it. Ahabatifillah, this should instill fear into our hearts because we don't know how our ending will come. We don't know if we're going to end up in the hellfire or we're going to end up in paradise. Ahabatifillah, the shaitan will come to you that when we're surrounded by falsehood falsehood is divided into two things Ahabatifillah as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned that the sins are and the, the falsehood is of two types a shubahat wa shahawat a shubahat Ahabatifillah this has to do with doubtful things that as a new Muslim you're going to be faced with people telling you different things someone's going to tell you you should be a Sufi and you should turn off the lights and you should say Allahu Allahu a hundred times that this is going to bring you closer to Allah someone else is going to say you should supplicate to the graves and this is going to bring you closer to Allah because you need this dead saint to draw you nearer to Allah Someone else is going to say you should follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you should adhere to the methodology of the salaf of this ummah. So habatifillah, you're going to be called into different things. And your heart should incline you to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because you have to know that you have to have sincerity to Allah in your worship and the only way your worship is going to be accepted is if it is done in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and that is the madhab of the salaf of this ummah that understanding of the Qur'an 
and the understanding of the Sunnah, it comes from what the Sahaba, those people who were around when revelation was being revealed, those people who were in the company of the Prophet Muhammad those people who were able to ask the Prophet so that establishes for us the path. That helps us to avoid the shabahat that is going to come to you and continue until you're put into the grave. People will come to you with different ways. And likewise, Ahabatifillah, non-Muslims will come. So my advice is don't go into the various sites on the internet and search for things that have to do with disbelief and those things which are going to knock you away from your faith and challenge your faith because you need to become grounded in your faith. And this comes to the point, the importance of ilm. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a Sahih Hadith that the importance of sticking with those clear matters. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, as was narrated by Abi, Abdra, uh, Abi Abdullah Nu'man ibn Bashir radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, رضي الله تعالى عنهما قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن الحلال بين وإن الحرام بين وبينهما أمور مشتبهات لا يعلمهن كثير من الناس فمن اتقى الشبهات فقد استبر لدينه وعرده ومن وقع في شبهات وقع في الحرام كالراعي يرايا لهما يشك أن يرتع فيه ألا وإن كل ملك همة ألا وإن حمى الله المحرمه ألا وإن في الجزد مضغة إذا صلحت صلح جزد كله وإذا فسد فسد جزد كله ألا وهي القلب رواه بخاري ومسلم أحبت في الله إن حديث في عبد الله أبي عبد الله نعمان بن بشير رضي الله تعالى عنه he said I heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم say that verily the lawful things are clear and the unlawful things are clear. And between them are doubtful things that not many people are aware of. And whoever fears or avoids those doubtful things, then they have safeguarded their religion. Then he has safeguarded his religion and his honor. And whoever jumps into those doubtful things, then they will fall into the haram. Similar to the guardian or the shepherd who safeguards his flock or grazes his flock in a pasture. And for sure they will fall into that pasture because they're, they're grazing next to that. And verily, every king has a pasture or has a, something that they are, they are protecting. And verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's things that he is protecting or things that are sacred are the things that he has made haram meaning that those things that you should not enter in, those are the things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited you from. And verily, in the body is a piece of flesh, a morsel of flesh, that if it is clean, the whole body is clean and healthy. And if it is sick, the whole body is sick, and verily, it's the heart. Habit tifillah, there's so many benefits. And this points to us a menhaj, a methodology, for protecting your religion. Because the Prophet ﷺ let us know the halal is clear, the haram is clear. Stay away from those things. And between them are doubtful things. If you avoid the doubtful things, as this is the madhab of the Salaf, you will safeguard your religion. But if you get into those doubtful issues, you don't know if it's halal, you don't know if it's haram, and you keep playing with it, and you keep asking about it, you keep uh, getting involved in it, for sure you're gonna, it's gonna lead you to the haram. And this hadith, it shows us 
that only some people know these affairs. Know that that بينهما أمور مشتبهة لا يعلمهن كثير من الناس. Most of the people don't know what these doubtful things are, but some do. It's the ulama, the ulama Rabbaniyun, those major scholars, those ulama, and they have four characteristics that made them the rasikhun fil ilm, as Allah mentions in the Quran, in Surah Al Ali Imran. The first thing a filah is that they have taqwa, so we should strive to have taqwa like them. They have taqwa fi ma bain al abd wa bain rabbi. They have God fearfulness, which is between them and their Lord, meaning they stay away from the haram, and they do the commandments that Allah has commanded them. The second characteristic they have is that tawada, that they are humble, and this has to do with the way they interact with other people, that they're humble. They're not arrogant and full of pride. This is going to help you stay on your religion. The third characteristic is that they have zuhd fi dunya, that they they avoid immersing themselves in, in, in having a lavish lifestyle at the expense of the akhirah. So, okay, I have a lot of books. But if these books are, are being used to bring me closer to Allah, to help me practice my Islam, to, bless, to, 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 to help me teach others to the extent of my ability, then those things can help you draw nearer to Allah and you'll be rewarded for them. But if you get these books because they're colorful, we have a lot of different colors up here. Here's a green and light white one. Here's a red one. Here's this color, maroon. Uh, this one has different colors. And we want to collect them to, 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 to be boastful, yeah, I've got a lot of books, or to be proud, or to say that you're an, an alam, which is, by the way, one of the reasons people enter the hellfire. And there's the, some of the first people that went into the hell, hellfire, as the Prophet wasallam said. So if you do it for the wrong reason, it will not benefit you. It will only harm you. And in fact, it could take you to the hellfire. So using this worldly life, to draw you closer to Allah, then that's okay. But to collect wealth just for the sake of having wealth, to sake of being lavish, to be flossy, to be flossy as they say, this is gonna this is gonna take you to the hellfire, Abdullah. The fourth characteristic we want to try to uh, gain, and that the ulama Arabaniyun have the rasakhun fi al-ilm, is mujahid al nafs fi ma bain wa bain nafsihi. This is this is so difficult for us. And this this characteristic is that the person strives, and this is what the ulama do, those ulama rasikhun fil ilm, to have jihad of their own ego. And this is what is between them and their self. This isn't the physical jihad of going fi sabilillah, من قاتل لتكون كلمة الله عليا هو في سبيل الله عز وجل. The one who fights strictly for the sake of Allah to raise up the كلمة الله هي عليا. Then this is في سبيل الله عز وجل as the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in the Hadith of Abi Musa رضي الله تلا عنه صلى الله عليه وسلم. But this jihad and nafs of Habib Allah, this this one is on another level. This is the one that keeps you. From going back on your Islam, 